love being in my stream is what it is, too. <laughs> Test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's away from my mouth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13. John is our big winner today. Our millionth customer at Napex. Set off the alarm. He set off the alarm. <laughs> You didn't hear it? <laughs> yeah, it just it blows up, man. I was <laughs> like, oh shit. Why did they push Yeah, you know. Did you guys beat him or at least pepper spray him? I threw him a prize. That's it, man. Beat him. <laughs> Get out! Uh, up, Zach. It's always low for some reason. He wants it up. One, two, three, four, but, but the media is good here. You guys are good on the levels, but just on the stream, it's, he's saying it's low. One, two, three, four. Jonathan, check it now. He boosted it. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, twelve, ten, eight, six, four, two. Stand by. He says. More. You got any more? Yep. You have any gain? All right, boosting it more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's saying he's hitting about negative 20 dB. Say again. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's good with that one. Thanks, John. Good to see you, sir. Talk to us about uh, your last fight. You know, you, October, you, you had the long build up to get back, and you know, it's this big moment, and you're looking for the perfect ending, and it, it doesn't go the right way, right? So, how difficult was that for you to, to have all that time and then come up short? Uh, yeah, definitely the, the long layoff was kind of difficult, kind of weird for me in the, in the fight. But uh, I know it, is, it was part of the, the process of the coming back, you know, the return. So I kept training, and uh, now I'm way better prepared, you know. Yeah. Like, very confident, you know, most confident. I was going to ask, I mean, I know you would never make excuses, but, you know, long layoff, then you change the opponent, move the date, every, you know what I mean? Like everything yeah, changes. Everything. So I know you wouldn't make excuses, but how difficult was that for, for all that you had to deal with? Yeah, it was, was really tough, especially because they changed the, the opponent. 
in six days, I think, like a, a regular one and then a southpaw. So they changed completely. So uh, it's kind of hard, but it is what it is. You got to go get out there and fight. You know, I did. They didn't go my way, but now I have another great opportunity to show my skills. Yeah. What has been the focus since then? Because obviously before it was just getting back, right? It was getting healthy and, and getting back in the cage. So what have you been focused on in, in preparation? Winning. For Winning. <laughs> for sure. Winning. Yeah. yeah. Talk about uh, the matchup with Sean O'Malley. I mean, were you, were you surprised to get this one? Were you, were you excited for it? What did you think when they gave you this name? Yes, of course. I'm super excited. Sean is a great fighter, very talented guy. But uh, I know if I go in there and throw all the, the, the tools that I have, I'm going to win for sure. What's your evaluation of him? Because there seems to be a lot of question, right? He came in as this big superstar, and then he comes up short, and people are saying, oh, well, is he even that good to begin with? You know, what do you think? Is he, is he an elite-level fighter? Man, I, I really think he's an elite fighter, but... Uh, um, yeah, he needs to show that. You know, he's a good fighter, but he needs to show him, prove it. Yeah. Last thing for me, I mean, it's, it's crazy. You're still just 29, I think. So, I mean, you've, you've been in the game for so long. But um, does this feel like an important moment? Like, uh, like, you have to win. You said you're focused on winning. Does this feel like a must-win type of fight for you? Yes. I, I always uh, want to win, you know. So, this is for sure always um, I must win. I always go for the victory, so this is I put pressure on myself and win, win, win. That's it. English still getting better, by the way, man. Little Spot bit, on, little bit, perfect. Little bit. <laughs> Thomas, right here. Uh, a lot has been made of whether uh, uh, Sean is can can stay healthy inside the octagon. He's had two leg injuries and in two different fights, uh, one from leg kicks and one he kind of rolled his ankle. So, when you're watching this, do you see a fighter that is fragile in there, or is it just freak accidents that keep catching him in these fights? Oh, man, it's kind of hard to say, but I'm sure that we're going to explore that for sure. Throw some leg kicks and uh, to open up this, the game, you know. But uh, I don't know. It's gonna, I, I have to see inside the cage how he reacts, you know, after some kicks. And then he's had some spectacular knockouts and some spectacular performances on his feet. He hasn't really got to show any of his grappling. Have, do, are you aware of his grappling pedigree at all? I know he's competed in some, uh, some tournaments in Las Vegas and stuff, but do you think he's a high-level grappler? Uh, to be honest, I don't think so. But, man, it, right now everybody trains all the, the, the martial arts, so I'm, I'm, I'm coming super prepared for anything, you know. If he wants to, go to, to fight stand-up, let's go. If he want to fight on the ground, I'm better prepared. So I'm ready for everything. Then finally, uh, what do you make of him saying on social media that he's still undefeated? His last loss was not a loss. Like you yourself had this long run, and then you had your first loss. Compared to your first loss to his, you just kept going. He con still considers himself undefeated. Yeah, man, it's kind of funny, you know. He, he needs to to face the problem, face the defeat, and try to get better, try to improve. I'm not saying those things, but it's his life, you know. And I'm not here to, to judge or to say about his life, you know, but uh, I treat some th those things different. But uh, it is his life, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thomas right here. We know he's known for sometimes trying to mess with opponents. Like last fight, he had the Ecuadorian colors in his hair for Chito. If he does anything, is that going to bother you? Or are you a type of guy that you're not listening? No, I'm, I'm, I'm experienced right now, so this is, doesn't affect me. And uh, I'm just going to go get, go there and hurt, hurt him in 15 minutes. Thank you. That's it? Thanks, Thank you. Thank you, guys.
process. You want to just sit down there? For I was going to say, so you look like you got time. <laughs>
Since a, I know maybe not the way you wanted, but co-main event, pay-per-view, I mean, uh, is, does, does it feel like a, a bigger fight when you get a position like that? Yeah, I mean, definitely it's not the way I wanted it, but I'm grateful anyway, you know, get this opportunity. And yeah, it makes it more fun, you know, more people are going to be watching, more eyes on me, and I can, you know, go out there, do what I do, have a great fight, and it's going to be fun for sure. What did you think when they offered you this fight, right? Because Tyron Woodley, a former champion, of course, but he's had those losses, right? So people are saying, oh, maybe he's not that great anymore. So when they offered you this fight, did it excite you? Or did you think, uh, you know, people are going to say, oh, you beat a guy that's not that good? Man, it definitely excited me. Fighting a former champion, it's always exciting. It's definitely the, the highest level opponent I've, I'm going to face till this day. And, you know, he's coming off three losses, but... He lost to the three best in the world. That's not like, you know, a, a big thing. Not in my book, at least. I still think he's dangerous. I think that he's going to be hungry to get back to the winning column, you know. And I'm going to be ready for the best Woodley ever. The Woodley that used to be the champion. Go out there and, and knock everybody out. That's the Woodley I, I imagine I'm, I'm going to be facing. And, yeah, I'm excited. I'm super excited and pumped for this fight. Okay. I was going to say, when you watch the tape on him, I mean, as you say, he lost to one, two, and three in the world. That's really not that bad. So when you, do you think people are making too much of that and maybe devaluing where he stands a little too much? Yeah, I mean, I think people always expect us to be the same forever. And, I mean, you cannot be – not everybody is going to be the champion forever. Or you're either going to lose that title or you're going to retire. It's one of the two options. So – I think that when you leave that status, when you're not the champion anymore, people like to talk about it. You know, they like to say you're not the same guy. They don't realize that the, the rest of the division is improving, is getting better, is studying that guy. And, and maybe they found something out and found a way to beat him. But it's not because he is not the same anymore. Just people learn and, and get better. So, you know, I, I think he's still a dangerous guy. And that's what I'm going to be looking at for sure. Does it feel like a big moment for you in your career? You know what I mean? Like, obviously, the hardcores have known who you are, and you've been kind of just below the surface, but you beat a former champion, co-main event, pay-per-view, like you said. Um, does this feel like maybe kind of that breakout moment for you? Definitely it does. Uh, I do feel it is a different energy in a way, in the sense that I know people are going to have more eyes on me, and I know what I'm capable of doing. I know that people, and the real hardcore fans, they know who I am. They know my style. And that's what everybody's going to get to watch Saturday night. And yeah, I, I think it's going to be a great night for me. Nice. Last thing for me, I mean, obviously you're not looking past this fight, but the welterweight division is kind of interesting right now, right? So what do you think makes sense for you? I mean, is there a fight that you're looking for? Because, you know, you, you have the history with Leon. You have the history with Wonder Boy. They're kind of right up there as well in that, that second tier. So what, what do you think makes sense for you moving forward? I mean, uh, first of all, it's focus on this fight. I got to get a big win over Woodley. But I believe a big win over a former champion guarantees me a, a chance at the top five, you know, at getting somebody in that mix. And from there, I mean, I got a lot of options. Those two rematches were are, are rematches that interest me a lot. And you got other names. You got Kobe. You got other guys that are, are there. And honestly, I want to fight any of them, anybody in the top five after this. But right now, I got to beat Woodley first to earn that, you know, earn that shot. Center, right here. Uh, you fought on one of his cards before. I think it was UFC 205. Did you, ever, did you have any interactions backstage between you and Tyron? Like, did you bump into each other and chat at all? Yeah, uh, when I fought in 205, we were, uh, I think both of us were red corner, so we were kind of in the same bus and everything. And I remember when we were going to weigh-ins, I kind of put, we had like some special things for that UFC that were from New York, and I was using the boxing boots that they gave me, and Tyron said, oh, that, that's looking dope and whatever. And I was like, man, the champion talked to me, that's awesome, you know. He knows who I am, and he called me by my name. And I remember that was kind of like a big moment for me then. And now to be fighting him, it's an honor, man. You know, I, I have always admired his style and, and the way that he was a, a great champion. And now I get to go out there and, and mix it up with him. It's going to be, you know, something that I've always dreamed of and it's going to be great. 
Well, since you sound like you've been a big fan of uh, Tyron for the majority of your career, is it frustrating as all watching his previous fights? Like, you know what he can do, but he finds himself kind of stuck on the fence and he's not really throwing punches. A lot of people are wondering why he's not moving forward. So as a fan of the, of the man as a fighter, was it frustrating to watch those last few fights? Maybe the last one against Kobe. The other two, not so much because Kamara and Gilbert are, were both my training partners. I was cornering Gilbert for that fight. So in a way, I was, you know, on their side. But, yeah, it's hard to see uh, maybe his style not, not work so well against them. I don't know why it was. Maybe these guys have, like, something different that he didn't feel comfortable with. But, yeah, I mean, if I, like, looking at my style, I know that I hit hard. I know that I can be aggressive. That's what I would do if I were in his place. But at the same time, we never know. Like, I'm not in his shoes. I don't know what he's going through. So, yeah, I can't say much about that. And then being in the corner for two of those fights and then watching the Colby one, did you see tendencies in all of his, in those three fights that you can, without giving anything away, obviously, that you know you can take advantage of? I think the pressure, you know, all these guys pressured him. And that's something natural for me. I pressure my opponents every single fight. I walk forward, I try to, you know, be in their face, try to hurt them every single minute I'm in there. And I think that's something that it's hard for him to deal with. In moments, in these three fights, he, he didn't deal with the pressure so well. And with me, I mean, I'm going to pressure him. So if he can handle it, it's going to be fight of the night. If not, I think I can get a finish. What do you make of the booking between Usman and Masvidal, the rematch? A lot of people, I think, were expecting other names, like maybe Wonderboy or Leon, but they went with the rematch. What do you think about that? Man, I, you know, I don't agree with it so much. I think that Masvidal, that, that was his last fight against, against Usman. So I, I don't see it so interesting, but we never know. He's going to have a full training camp, as he said. In my opinion, it's not going to change that much because Kamaru is a, is a dominant champion. And, you know, he can impose his will against Masvidal like he did the first time. But we never know. We'll see. I love Masvidal's style. I think it would be a better matchup against other guys. You know, I, I would like to see him maybe against Leon Edwards. That would be a fight and that I would be interested. And myself, I would love to fight Masvidal. I think that would be, you know, a banger of a fight. But we're going to have that fight, and it's going to move the division. That's something good because past that, we can see what's going to go on. And one final one. Uh, outside of Usman, pretty much no one in the top five has fought in each other. They're all kind of trying to get that top fight, and they're all kind of circling each other. So it's just staying active and being one of these few welterweights that keeps fighting the most important thing moving forward? For sure. I think that activity is a big thing. People remember who you are, remember your style. They want to watch you fight. Uh, Leon Edwards is an example. You know, he wasn't active for a long time. And now he came back and had that unfortunate, you know, fight w the way that it ended. And it didn't do much to him for him, you know. And fans are kind of like, okay, what's, what goes on now? Have that rematch or fight somebody else. It's the kind of thing that when you're not active, people don't, you know, you're not that relevant anymore. Even though you're coming off many wins and in a good moment. You got to fight. You got to fight so people watch you and people want to see you challenge for a title or something like that. And that's definitely been important for me. Okay, thanks.
What's the return of the undefeated Sean O'Malley? We're, uh, we're certainly happy to have you here. How's it feel to be back on Fight Week? It feels fucking good. <laughs> you know it absolutely drives people mad when you refer to yourself as undefeated. I mean, it just literally makes people go crazy. Is that part of the, the fun in, in, in saying that, a part of the reason you like to keep throwing it out there? K kind of. It's just the way I feel, too. It's, uh, you know, I've been asked this question so many times, but it's that, you know, they ask me how I feel, whatever. If uh, I say I feel undefeated, I don't feel like I was beat because my skill set wasn't as good as his. Um, you know, it was, it was a freak accident. How many leg kicks have been thrown since that kick to now, and how many times has that happened? You know, so it, you can't – if he would have said, I'm going to go in there and kick his nerve, and that happened, I'd be like, damn, this motherfucker's good. And it, he is good. Cheeto's a good, good, good opponent. But I think uh, the way that fight ended and, and watching it, the fight before that happened – I was in control of that fight. I was doing what I wanted. Um, you know, he didn't take me down and elbow me. I, I, my leg completely gave out. I rolled my ankle four or five times, and I was still piecing him up on the feet. I, I backed him down, had him covered up, and I went to step back, and, and my ankle gave out. So, you know, if he would have beat me at a decision or, or just beat me in any other way than, than me getting injured, I would say I'm 12-1, and one, no issue. I don't have a problem with losing. I lose in the gym all the time. You know, get up, slap hands, com compete again. I don't mind losing. I'm... You know, one of these days I'm going to lose a fight, hopefully not in that kind of fashion, and it's going to be like, yeah, he, he beat me. I have no, no issue losing. Um, you know, I think the whole 12-1 and 1 undefeated, mentally undefeated thing has gotten, gotten a little crazy, but I, I, I do kind of enjoy when people get mad at it now, but also it's just I just answer the questions you guys ask. Yeah. Do you th I was going to ask you, do you think people are being a little unfair? I mean, I think about this game, so much of it is self-belief and mental confidence. You know, if that's the mindset you have to have going in there, that's the mindset you have to have, right? I mean, do you think people are kind of unfairly jumping at you when, when you do answer that question? Yeah, I don't think it's the mindset I have to have. Like I said, if he would have beat me fair, like if he would have beat me any other way, and I'm 12-1 and going into this fight against Thomas, I would sit here and say, yeah, I'm 12-1 and coming off a loss, and it's – doesn't really change my mindset I'm prepared very well to go in there against Thomas and beat his ass like it doesn't matter if I'm 12 and 1 or 12 and 0 it doesn't matter what happened last fight it happened it matters what happened in this training camp this last eight weeks I prepared I'm healthy and I'm ready to go yeah last thing I want to ask you about Cheeto is that this thing has gone on talked about for so long <laughs> I know at some point he said I don't really need to fight him again but 
the way this thing has continued on, do you feel like this is a rematch that has to happen? Like, I think people just want to see it. Uh, I, I know he, quote, he, he said he, there's not enough money to, in the world to fight me. You know, that just sounds stupid. Like, it's not like that dude's loaded. You know, I offer him a hundred or $500,000 fight, he's going to say no. I mean, that would be, are you scared? I don't know. Um, but it, it, will it happen? I don't know. They're, they're, the division's on fire right now. Um, I'm going to be coming off a win. He's going to be coming off a loss. I don't care who to who. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to be champ. And if he climbs his way up, I think that rematch will be there. But other than that, we'll, it doesn't even matter. I'm focused on Thomas. Yeah. Like you said, it matters what's happening here. Thomas Almeida, they gave you that name. A guy that not that long ago people were saying, hey, man, title challenger, you know, and he's had some setbacks. Um, what did you think when you got the name? Did it excite you? Or were you thinking, ah, you know, I'd like somebody a little higher up? No, I was excited about that fight. Uh, he's a good kickboxer. His last three fights, he's lost to good people, like really good guys. So it's, you know, I think he's a legitimate opponent. I think looking at it from that perspective, saying, oh, he's coming off three losses, like, you know, he's still a dangerous opponent, and he's coming off three losses, which might make him more dangerous. Um, you know, it, it, this could be, you know, he might go to Bellator after this or go somewhere else. I might send him on his way out. So he, he's going to be coming ready to go. So, no, this is a good fight, and uh, I'm excited about it. Yeah. First training camp for you as a dad, did that change anything, whether it be just, you know, your daily routine, obviously, or, you know, mentally, you know, the psychological changes that come along with fatherhood? Um, I slept in the other room a couple times, like two or three <laughs> nights. That's about it. Other than that, nothing really. Danny, she's, she was pretty much been a stay-at-home mom, works a couple days a week. So, so she's been, you know, when I go train, it's, it's, it, it's, been, it's been good. It hasn't been worse or better it's it's been good um waking up every morning to her you know waking up to a baby she's trying to suck on her big toe like it's her thumb it's just it, you know you get you're in a good mood the instant you wake up so it's been it's been good in that aspect um as far as training it hasn't been like an issue we, we i had a great camp um you know i have a cage at my house now in my garage so it, it's nice to be able to train there train at the lab where i get really good training train at tim's gym tankino's gym you know, nothing changed in the aspect of, uh, of having a baby. Nice. Last thing for me, and I mean, obviously you want to go out there and you want to win, but I'm just curious kind of what your goal is here because, you know, when you came into the sport, you had so much attention right away. And, and after this last one, man, I feel like people have turned on you a little bit. You know, you've had to deal with some hate, which I don't think you're used to. So, I mean, do you want to go out there and, like, silence these people and shut all these people up, or do you even focus on things like that? <laughs> yeah, I definitely have gotten a lot of hate. I still get so much, like, every time I go live on Twitch, there's, clown emotes like people call me a clown and stuff so yeah I wasn't really used to dealing with too much hate um but I also know like the p people that are doing that like th they're probably dealing with some stuff mentally you know there's there's not anybody that's doing real good in life that's coming on there saying, saying talking shit so um it, it hasn't really affected me too much but it would be nice to go out there and prove uh the stupid people that they are stupid that I'm you know, I think people that are intelligent and understand skills look at me and see what I've done and go, he's legitimate. He's got legit skills. Um, and then there's some people that think, you know, that the last couple fights may have been lucky against Eddie, Jose. Not lucky, but just, you know, oh, it is, that happens. But, you know, I, I think I'm a high-level striker, high-level MMA fighter, and I get to go prove that, so. Sean, sure. how much of the undefeated thing you've been saying is – that you genuinely believe it, which I believe you do, and how much of it was steering into it knowing how much it was annoying people? No, that's, just, I mean, people are always like, be yourself. So I was just being myself. How do I feel? 12 and 0, I didn't feel, you know, so it was, it was like just being myself. And I didn't think it was going to get as much attention as it got, but. What was it like when you did, I think you did the podcast maybe the day after, a couple of days after. What was it like seeing the vitriol and reaction to that? Because even from an outsider looking at it, it was pretty impressive amounts. Yeah, I got like, as far as the hate or yeah. what? Yeah. Like I said, I still get so, still get messages and, and, and stuff. So, um, but I think no matter what, I go out there and knock out Thomas. I'm still gonna get hate for 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 the end for the rest of my career. I'm so, there's going to be haters. Usually that means you're doing something right. So I think I think we're on a good good track. Do you think fighters and opponents are gonna look at that fight and think, well, I just have to go out there and kick him in, in the leg, and that's the end of him? Um. Yeah, maybe. I think um, maybe stupid people. I, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, I think Thomas is going to definitely come out and try to kick my legs. Like, I think that's kind of probably going to be part of his game. But I think it's going to matter what this, how, how do I look this fight. He's going to kind of determine what other people's game plan is going to be.
do you have a plan for checking that? Do you, do you feel in yourself that there's a vulnerability there? Or do you think that was literally just a freak accident <laughs> that will never happen again? I've had, I had 14 amateur fights. I had, uh, I've had, well, now 13 pro fights. I've had a lot of fights. I, mean, you guys, I act like I've never been kicked in the leg before. I don't know how to check a kick. I was, I was, you either check a kick, stuff a kick, or get out of the way of a kick. I was getting out of the way, and his, his Ecuadorian big toe <laughs> fucking hit my nerve. Like, I watched it so many times in slow motion, and I remember him saying after the fight, oh, I have the tough shins, and I, I was a calf kick. It wasn't a calf kick. His toe literally hit my nerve. Um, and if it happens again, they'll be fucking crazy. Like, I, if that happens again ever in my career, that's going to be crazy. Um, so, yeah, I, don't, I think it was uh, – I don't even remember what you asked. Sorry. All right. Uh, last thing for me, obviously you don't think about losing, but any temptation next time, if that happens, you can still say 12-2 uh, and two undefeated. <laughs> If it happens again, maybe, uh, yeah, that's a good question. If, if Thomas comes out and kicks me in the nerve and it ends like that, maybe I'll have to rethink my undefeated statement, but maybe I'll be 12-1 and one after that. No, I don't know. We'll, I, I don't see that happening again. How many times has it happened since my fight? None. How many times has it happened? It happened to uh, Jamie Varner. Uh, it happened to Brent, or Michael Chandler when he fought Brent Prim, Primus. And I think it happened to Demetri, or Henry when he fought Demetrius a little bit. Um, but his came back. I was too busy trying to, you know, take uh, Cheeto's head off to, to let my let, let it come back. But um, yeah, it doesn't happen very often. If it happens again, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to be done fighting. <laughs> Thanks, man. Sean, uh, one last thing on leg kicks. Uh, we've also saw Conor McGregor kind of succumb to leg kicks in January, and the narrative after that, a lot of fighters were saying it's very difficult to even train leg kicks because you don't want to just start eating leg kicks before a fight. Is that true? Like, is it that difficult to train leg kicks ahead of a fight? It, like, that calf kick's a motherfucker. I've been kicked from the calf like five years ago by John, uh, John Moraga, y Yatsin, Meza. Like, the calf kick's been, I've known about it for a long time. Um, yeah, the, the, there's, there's different ways. Like I said, you could, you could, I mean, there is a way to check it. You could stuff it and, and counter with a two, one, two, whatever. Pull out completely and not even be in the way of the kick, which is what I was doing with Cheeto. And that fucking toe got me. Um, so, yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, there, there's ways to defend it, but... And then, s speaking specifically of this upcoming fight against Thomas, uh, was there a fight that you, re that you remember he really got on your radar? I know a lot of people uh, point to the UFC 189, the flying knee knockout against Brad Pickett, but there was at one point people had circled him as a possible champion uh, down the line. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't remember what fight I saw, but I do... I, I don't even know if... I wasn't in the UFC yet. It was, was pre-UFC, and I remember seeing him. I'm like, damn, that, that kid's fun to watch, and I was a fan. So, I mean, he's kind of the first guy I've ever – I'm fighting that I'm, I was a fan of before. Um, you know, I wasn't, like, a huge fan. I wasn't, like, oh, my God, I have to follow him and watch every fight. But I watched him. I was, like, he's got a sweet style. Like, I, I really like his style. Um, and now I have to go and beat him up. So it's pretty cool. You mentioned he has the high-level kickboxing. He obviously uh, brings a high-level Muay Thai in there. But he's also a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. Have you seen anything in his grappling at all to, to show that he is high-level there? I don't. I don't remember seeing him grapple much. Um, yeah, I, I don't remember seeing him grapple much. But I'm, I'm, I'm confident in the grappling aspect. And finally, what do you make of the state of the division right now? There was that you know, weird disqualification that happened a few weeks ago. We got a lot of main events coming up. So, what's your thought on the top of the 135 division? The, yeah, the bantamweight, hands down, right now, is, is the best division in the UFC, which is pretty fucking sweet. Um, we got Corey versus TJ coming back. How is TJ going to look? Um, Without EPO, we'll see how is uh, Rob Font versus Cody. I mean, there's just so many sweet fights. Aljo versus Peter's got to happen again. Um, you know, my buddy Kyler Phillips just beat Song. That that's sweet. I, there's just so much sweet sweetness going on in the division right now, and I'm I'm excited to you know be a part of it. I'm I don't feel like I'm a part of it yet. I got to get another win in in, in there in a spectacular fashion to put myself back in the mix. Hey, Sean, over here. Yep. Are you changing anything in the way you're doing your ankle wraps for this fight? Last time I, f you know, I think, I, I don't like sitting up here and saying all oh, excuses, excuses, but I, I do in the back, it was tight. My ankle wraps were tight. I had my coach, Brandon, trying to loosen it up a little bit. Um, so I don't know if my that nerve would have came back and I would have been able to have control of my foot or if I had rolled it too many times anyway and it was just fucked. Um, but yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap my ankles again. Um, hope, and just, you know, maybe... Not as tight. Thank you. 
Shauna, how, how long after the fight did it kind of take you to, to, to feel normal in the leg again? Was it a, a lingering thing or was it pretty quick? No, it, it was definitely lingering. Um, I rolled it pretty bad. Like rewatching the fight, I could, it was like, ooh, it was hard for me to even watch it. I, I rolled it four or five times real, real good. Um, and they say the more you roll your ankle. I've been playing basketball, football, baseball, soccer since I was four years old. I've rolled my ankles a, a bunch. And they say, you know, the more you roll your ankle, the, the more susceptible it is to, to roll it again. So, you know, it's, it's part of the fucking game. We're in there fighting pretty much naked, shin on shin, and, and just we're, we're going at it. So, um, yeah. And then you, uh, when you came back after, your, after the layoff, like you were in there three times in a row real quickly, was it nice to take a step back again? And, and you know, I know you had a lot going on in your life too, so there's things to do, but was it nice to not be in there three times in a row real quickly? Yeah, I knew, I knew uh, Elena was going to be born shortly after. So the first fight against Jose Quinones was a two-year layoff. And uh, I was excited to get back in there. I was, it was, I, I was just itching to get in there. And that was Danny's first trimester. And then we fought Eddie in, in her second trimester. Then we fought Cheeto in her third trimester. And then the baby was born shortly after. And uh, yeah, so, yeah, it was good to take some time off. Definitely, you know, it was my competitive itch. I was, you know, I was messaging the UFC. I'm like, hey, I'm ready. But, you know, luckily, I think it's probably good Um, because I think nerves take a little while to heal. You know, I always felt fine, but I I don't know what kind of damage it actually did. Um, But I think they offered me Thomas in February, and I was like, hell yeah. And then they didn't message me for a little bit. I'm like, I'm messaging back, say, what's up? What's going on? He said, "Uh, Thomas needs needs a little extra time. He's a little scared of you. No, they didn't say that. But uh, (laughs) they said uh, he needed some more time, something with training. I was like, I get it. Um, So so it ended up being now, which is, I feel like, right, it's been perfect timing. Hey, Sean, right here. Uh, I was just wondering what you thought about the whole, um, you know, the Aljamain Sterling, Peter Yan finish and, you know, the foul. And then the next week there was the, the Muhammad eye poke. Like, I mean, is there, is there an issue, you think, with, ref, you know, referees implementing the, the foul rules and that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah the Peter Aljo fight, that was a sweet fight. <clears throat> Aljo came out. I think the rematch can be interesting because Aljo's not going to come out like that. He's going to really, he knows now he can't go and take Peter down with ease and beat his ass. Like, that's probably kind of what he thought was going to happen, and that's just that's not what happened. So I think, you know, going to do a rematch, it's going to be a lot different fight. He's going to probably try to pace himself a little more because, you know, that fight was only in the fourth round. Peter still looked, you know, pretty fresh, and Alja looked, you know, gassed. So uh, it's, it's going to be a good fight. They're, both those dudes are studs. Peter's style is sweet. You know, it's fun to watch his little Russian self walking around hands up, throwing bombs, switching stances, you know, the dude's high level. So it's, I think me and Peter are going to have a sweet fight someday. I think that's a very interesting matchup. Um, but, yeah, that, 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 that was a good scrap. Uh, as far as the refing goes, and, and I don't – I think the refs are doing a good job. I, I don't know. It's, the, the gloves are obviously an issue. I think that could be fixed pretty simple probably with, with a new pair of gloves that – like Trevor Whitman, I guess. I haven't seen them but I've heard Rogan just go on rants about how much better they are than, than the UFC with gloves we have now. Um, but I think refs, refs are doing good, and then fighting, you know, shit's going to happen it, no matter what. So, Last thing for me, uh, what's your prediction for Ben Askren versus Jake Paul? Whoo, what is that, April 17th? I want to be there. Is they a fan? Do they have fans? Are they having a – Oh, yeah. Yeah? I think so, right? No? Oh, they no allowed, fans? They're only allowing 100 people. They're like – Fuck. Oh, I mean, I think Sean O'Malley can. Maybe if I get a win, if I lose, if I lose, I'd be like, nah. That's the crazy thing about this sport. I I, I knock out Eddie. I'm getting messages from every blue check mark, blue check mark, blue check mark. I lose to Cheeto, just ghosted. No one gives a fuck about me. Uh, but that's okay. I, I I know how that's how the, I don't let those people like get me excited that they message me or whatever. So, um, yeah. But if I get a win, they probably let me in. If I lose, they'll be like, who are you? So we'll see. Uh, but I would like to go. I want to go to that. Uh, Jake versus Ben. Who do I got? I don't, that there's not a lot of fights that excite me, and this ain't gonna be the best boxing fight. Like this ain't gonna be like a a good technical boxing fight. But I'm excited. I'm this is like I'm excited for that fight. I'm I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna be excited. Fight week. I'm gonna watch if they have any little embeddeds or any acts like whatever they're putting out. I'm watching. I, I want to see that fight. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Ben versus Jake. This is gonna be. It's exciting. I, it's going to be a sloppy, sloppy fight. Ben's going to make it sloppy, which is good for him. Um, 
Jake's gonna, you know, he's 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 got to. He looks like he's training hard. He's young. He's athletic. Um, so if he if he doesn't beat Ben Askren, we'll see where he goes from there. You know, you, he has to beat Ben. He he has to beat Ben to show he's a legitimate boxer. Gun to your head. Who do you pick? <sighs> I I don't know. I, I think. God, I, I want to say Jake because he's going to be a better boxer, but Ben's such a good competitor. He's going to, he, it's not going to be a good boxing fight. It's going to be a, like a grueling. God, I, I hope Jake doesn't come in there and try to put his lights out in the first round, two rounds. He's going to gas out, and Ben's going to be there. Ben's going to be there all eight rounds. I don't think Ben's going to gas. Um, I think if Jake comes out calm, stays calm, fight week, stays calm, fight day, doesn't you know, get too excited, just blow his load in the first couple rounds, I think he can outbox him if he stays behind his jab and, and doesn't doesn't let Ben do what Ben wants to do. I think Jake could get the job done. Thanks, Sean. Yep. Thank you, guys. That was fucking awesome having you guys actually in person. It was way better than seeing you guys over Zoom. Thank you, guys. I mean, last time out, kind of a frustrating one for you, right? I mean, you had all the momentum in the world and all the hype behind you, and then it didn't go your way. Talk to you about the, the lessons you took out of that one. Um, I mean, like, you can only really take so much lessons from a fight that's, like, less than two minutes. It's like, <laughs> like I mean, I've been trying to explain that to my students and a couple other people. And, uh, like, I saw how people were, like, jumping on Freggy Egger, asking him, like, yo, you don't, you don't really learn anything from fights that are so fast like that. Like, I definitely made a couple of mistakes in the fight, and it's some stuff that I have to fix with. But really, it's just, it's the coin toss. It's what we do. I'm, you know, we fight, and shit can go wrong. Is that a hard reality to accept, right? That, like, you can do everything right, and it still doesn't work out? No. I mean, like, I, I, I try to tell people this all the time, like, like, I've, I've had this approach my entire career. I'm like, you have no control over it. Actually, Tony Ferguson said it best, and I've kind of, like, been living by that for a while. He said, the only thing you can control in a fight is your pace. 
And that's very true. The only thing you can control is how in shape you are. Everything else is a coin toss. So, I mean, like, yeah, I, I wish everything plans out right. I mean, like, I had an amazing camp for that fight, and I didn't do anything. Like, it was just all backwards. It happens. Took six months for you to get back. It seemed to me uh, from social media you were ready to get back a lot sooner, right? So what's, what's, what's been going on in these six months? Um, you know, I've been doing my dad thing. You know, I got kids from cyber schools. Like, you know, outside of fighting, we're still regular people. <laughs> so I'm teaching at my gym, running my gym, uh, helping other fighters get ready for fights and stuff, going all around, working and picking up some new skills and stuff, but training consistently. But same old, same old. Nice. So they, you did get a fight. You got the matchup with Jamie Malarkey. What, what did you think when they gave you the name? Were you familiar with him at all? What did you think about the matchup? I, had, I hadn't watched his second fight. I did watch his first fight. I try to watch every like lightweight in the UFC. If you're a lightweight, even if you're a lightweight outside the UFC and you're looking, I'm watching you. So, <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I knew who he was and stuff. I knew he was tough and stuff. And then I watched his other fight. Like, oh, he's really tough. He had two really tough kickboxers for his first two UFC fights. That's a hard it's a hard break, so um, this is a really tough division, so I, I'm expecting him to come out and be ready to go. Yeah. The last week or so, we've all been speculating whether he was going to be part of this COVID thing. Were you following along with that? And yeah. What's that like for you thinking, like, am I going to fight? Am I not going to fight? It was horrible because, like, last week's fights, and they, they started announcing the cancellation, and then they announced the um, title fight for this car, and I was like, oh, shit. I instantly text my manager, and he was like, no, everything, he said, they said he's good right now. He's in isolation, so everything should be good, so... Hopefully, like, you know, I mean, fights have been getting canceled on Fridays. <laughs> so hopefully we're, we're still good to go. So I'm, I'm still cutting weight and preparing like I'm fighting. Very nice. Last thing for me, talk to you about the goal here. I mean, obviously the goal is always to pick up a win. But, you know, like I said, I feel like you had this huge momentum behind you, man. Do you feel like you got to come in and make that splash again, like make this huge wave? Or is it like, hey, let's just get in there and get a win and, and get back on track? Um, It's weird because in MMA, you're only as good as your last fight. I mean, people will – watch you win 12 fights, you lose one, and then everybody would be bums making memes of you and stuff. So that's just the sport. I mean, like, you can't take it too personal. You have to know who you are and, like, kind of, like, understand how you approach the fight game. So for me, it's just come out here and get another W. What's up, man? I mean, touch wood that everything goes okay and you do get the opponent you, you want on Saturday. Let's say they come to you on Friday and say, no, he's out. Would you even take another opponent at that point? Would you be just so desperate to fight that you'd just say yes? Or what do you think at that point? Friday night? Yeah. Well, Friday morning. I'll give you Friday morning. Uh, it depends on what freaking weight class he's going to be coming in. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm not, I'm, I, don't, I don't really want to be fighting guys gigantic to me. I mean, I, don't, I can't really jump up and I can't jump down a lightweight or featherweight. But, I mean, if they came up on Friday and they're, like, someone new, I'm like, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, that's how I got into UFC, right? I took a fight on four-day notice, so I can't be like, oh, hell no. I'm not doing that. So I'll just take it, I guess. And, and this isn't really a question as much as a statement. I just want to say that's a very lovely tracksuit you're wearing today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Come right. Uh, what do you yeah. make of the state of the division right now? A lot of go lot going on in the top. You got title fights. You got new go new guys coming in, kind of skipping the queue. Yeah, it's, a, right it's a shit show. <laughs> like what else? Is, what else is there to say about it? There's so many lightweights. Like people keep asking me, like, are you realistic? Are you looking to get to a title run? I'm like, dude, I'm 34. I turned 35 in October. Like the average lightweight is the average successful lightweight, like going for a title run. Like there, they people like the younger guys call Tony Ferguson old. Right? They're like, oh, he's old. I'm like, so, I mean, I'm 34. I've only had three UFC fights. So, I mean, like, realistically approach. So it takes four years to get to a title in the lightweight division, as we thought it did. And then things change up. I mean, like, it's a business. So, I mean, like, I don't really have any say-so over that. I just fight whoever they put in front of me. But the lightweight division is a complete shit show. Like, the top 15 guys want to fight the top 15 guys and them only. The guys outside of that are, like, scraping their way to get in, and no one wants to fight them, and they're saying, oh, I, I want to fight a numbered guy, so they just keep recycling fighters. And then you build up. There's, like, the, the guys from, like, 15 to 50 are all, like, serial killers who can all just jump into the top 15, but the top 15 won't give them a place. So it sucks. I mean, it's cool because, it, I mean, the fans get great fights. Out of lightweights, you'll get phenomenal fights, and you don't even know who the hell these guys are. You're sitting like, who the hell is this guy? And they're fighting to death. But, I mean, like, it's, 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 it's the way the division is. What do you make of uh, Michael Chandler have, getting one win and then getting the title? Was he the right guy to get that title shot? So I, um, I had an interview. Someone called me. I think they posted on, I think it was BJ Penn or something. They called me and they did a little interview. I was tired. I'm cutting weight. I'm about to leave and go fly out. 
And I specifically said, I was like, hey, man, I've been a big fan of Michael Chandler because I have, I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'm a fan of martial arts, so I'm not going to be like, oh, they're in my division. I've been watching Michael Chandler since he started fighting in Bellator. And I was like, I'm a bit of big, I've been a big fan of Michael Chandler's, but he just got knocked out by Patricio Pitbull like two years ago. And Patricio Pitbull's this fucking big. <laughs> like, so, I mean, like, and he's only on a two fight winning streak and he's only fought once in the, in the UFC and he's getting a title shot. And I didn't think, it's not like I'm supposed to be getting a title shot, but there's like multiple guys. I think in the lightweight division, you should have to be on like a five fight winning streak to get a title shot. So, I think you're kind of shitting on other people. But, I said, yeah, I mean, I think I could knock Michael Chandler the fuck out. And then that was the cover for the thing. So please don't take this and switch up my words. All I'm saying is I think a lot of fighters feel cheated in this division that he just came in and got that title shot. But it's, it's hater aid that we're drinking because if it was me, I'd be like, screw y'all. I got the title shot. I'm jumping in front of y'all. He leapfrogged everybody. It's a sport. It's whatever makes money. and It's, it's a business. And we know that. So. So was Charles the right opponent for him? So was Charles the other right choice? Yes. You can go on my Instagram. Before I was in the UFC, and even as I was in the UFC, I was like, yo, Charles Oliveira is the dark horse. Like, he's a dark horse. No one wanted to fight him, and he just finally got to the right place. I mean, like, there's multiple different guys. I mean, like, there's a uh, um, Darnell, Darnius. I mean, like, there's so many guys. There's, like, so many guys. There's, um, the guy that just beat um, Jude Dober. He's on, like, a six-fight win streak, right? I, I want to mess up his last name. I got yeah, a unique Mark name. Markachev. Yeah, I want to mess up nobody's name because people be messing up my names. But, um, yeah, I mean, like, there's so, there's, so many, there's so many guys. And then, like, he wins one. He, like, leapfrogs in front. But it's business. Just right here to go yes. back to your tracksuit real quick. Was it what was it about Bruce Lee, Game of Death? Those vibes that you want to bring in today? Um, I mean, I've I've been a big Bruce Lee fan. I shout out to my mom because she got me into uh, Bruce Lee when I was younger. But I've always just like I was always like his approach to thing, like his approach to fighting. Like he was just asking me about like, do you think about stuff? Bruce Lee said, you know, you want to hit, you don't have to do it. It does it all on itself, and that's how I like to approach fighting and stuff so yeah bruce is the man game of death is the movie too it sucks he didn't get to finish it but those those scenes at the end i think i watched those like a thousand times he comes up he fights kareem abdul jabbar he's like twice his height that's such an iconic scene man it's like amazing game of death over enter the dragon yes even though even though like even though he finished enter the dragon but like that the scene when he fights all his real friends in game of death those are people that are actually his friends and he fights them that was iconic, man. It's amazing. Good luck. Thank you. Good. Awesome. Sweet.
Okay, cool. Been difficult for you? Everything, and, and, and how did this go down? Today? Um, I, I found out earlier. Uh, my coach called me. You know, when he calls, there's always bad news. <laughs> so uh, he told me right away I had an opponent, an opportunity, and I was happy. So it was worrisome and then happiness. And that's how I, I guess we all found out at the same time. <laughs> did, I mean, so did he basically just take this fight on your behalf? I mean, was there any discussion of, like, is this the right opponent? Do we match up stylistically correct with this guy? That sort of thing. Right, right. Um, I, I don't know. Um, so pretty much <laughs> he, he told me, and I was like, yeah, I'm for it. You know, it doesn't matter. Um, so we, he, he probably looked him up or whatnot and did his coaching, you know, little ordeal. But, I mean, at the same time, I'm like, if you would have told me, I was like, it don't matter. Let's go. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, you're going to be in a cage with this guy in 72 hours. So, I mean, are you, do, you, do you start researching? Do you go watch fights at this point? Do you yeah, try yeah, to? yeah, definitely. You got to be smart. You know, maybe I'll pick up something before the fight. So, I'll watch him. Look at, I can, you know, see if I can pick up some tendencies. Uh, other than that, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Nice. How frustrating overall has this whole stretch been, though, for you? I mean, I feel like COVID has impacted you quite a bit you know fights keep getting moved and dates and scheduled and I mean it just it seems like every fight you've had has been moved right so I mean how difficult has this stretch been for you oh man COVID has been awful on me uh 2020 and then you know the moving of the fights right after surgery I had 2019 you know uh and the shutdowns or whatnot hey man I'm ready let's go <laughs> Yeah. Has it been a mental check at all? I mean, you, you think of all the momentum you had coming into 2020, right? And then it's all been kind of shot. I think people still see skills in you, of course, but you got to pick all that back up. Has this, you know, has it been kind of a mental check for you at all? Yeah, it's been a mental check, and I checked it, so I'm, I'm ready to show them. Let's go. Very nice. Right on. Last thing for me, talk to me about the goal here. I mean, obviously you want you want to get a win, get back in the win column, but do you want to make uh, like a statement? I mean, I, again, I've mentioned all that hype that I think you had around you. I, I think of you as a pretty low key guy. I don't even know if you care about hype, but do you want to go out there and, and generate momentum again, or is it just let's get a win and, and get that second paycheck? No, I want to generate you know momentum, but I never like hype. I, I want to be known for skill. So with, with that said, I, I feel like I'm a, a complete MMA fighter. So I, I dropped the ball, and, you know, I won some great fights. So now I'm complete, and uh, my mind is like, let's go. I'm ready. Complete MMA fighter. Right on. Lonzo, right here. Uh, the change from opponents, obviously, outside of uh, their skill sets, it's orthodox to southpaw. Does that cause any issues with preparation at all? No, no, not at all. I mean, uh, his reach uh, pretty much the same as mine, so a little shorter. Um, so with that said, it's, it, it'll be okay. Yeah. Anything else? All right. Okay. All right, thank you.
Jamie, give us a, an idea what the last week or so has been like for you. I mean, obviously we've seen everything that's happened, and I think we were worried whether we can get to see you compete here or not. So what's this, what's this been like for you? Yeah, it's been a crazy week. Um, it's a little bit bittersweet, you know. Um, <clears throat> me and uh, Alex Volkanovski trained really hard for this, uh, this fight, um, coming over here together, and to see him get his, uh, his shot taken away like that, it sucks. Um, I'm just thanking my lucky stars that it wasn't me and um, that I'm, I'm still able to compete this weekend. You guys had to go through like some additional, you know, I guess steps to get to this point, right? I mean, did it do anything that impacted your, your training or your final preparation, whether it be physically or mentally? Um, not really, no. Like uh, in this, we're very lucky over in Australia. As far as, you mean as far as COVID? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're real lucky over where, where I'm from. We've uh, got it pretty down pat um, and everything was, was as normal. We, we were just training like a normal training camp. Good stuff. Well, the UFC run I know hasn't exactly gone as you would have liked it to be so far. But so what, what, I mean, what kind of lessons have you taken? Where, where, where do you stand on kind of, you know, the, the difficult fights that you've been through? Yeah, it's, uh, it's all a part of the journey, man. And I'm, uh, I'm definitely not leaving this to the judges anymore. Uh, I never, I never do. I never like to leave it to the judges. But that last fight, um, it's left a bad taste in my mouth. And I'm a little, that little bit more hungry for the finish. Yeah, and nevertheless, I think you're in a kind of a featured position here in this bout. Does that, does that mean something to you, that they still trust you to put you in a spot like that? Yeah, well, I think they know. Uh, I, think, I think everyone knows I won that last fight, and I'm, I'm a gamer. Like, I'm, I'm coming to fight, so um, it's going to show this weekend. Nice. What do, you, what do you think about the matchup when they gave you the name? Was it one that you anticipated all, expected, that, that you knew much about? No, I didn't expect it or, or anticipate it, but I'm very excited about it. It's a, I think it's a good stylistic matchup for me, uh, one. And I said, like I said before, come or he comes to fight, and they're the guys that I want to fight. Yeah. Last thing for me, I just kind of wonder what the goal is here, because so you've been in some great fights, but is it a, is a great fight worth it if you don't get your hand raised? I mean, would you rather go out there and just have a boring fight, you know, but, but, but you get the win? What's, what, what's most important here? The win's the most important thing on my mind right now. Um, but if I can do it in an exciting fashion, even better. Jamie, we're here. Uh, Kama has a lot of knockout wins, but he also has some pretty impressive submission wins his last few fights. Is there any... Uh, do you see any uh, of his strengths that I think that maybe even pundits and fans don't really notice, but you as a fighter notice from watching him on tape? Yeah, I notice everything. Like he's a, he's a well-rounded fighter, and um, we're ready for everything.
Hey, guys. Hey, Tyron. Welcome back, man. Obviously, last time we saw you, you were in a heck of a lot of pain, man. It was, it was tough to see you like that. So uh, what, what, what exactly did it end up being, and, and, and you know, what was that recovery process like for you? You know, I popped um, two pieces of cartilage underneath my bone. Um, I think I may have popped it a little bit earlier in the fight, and just to try to breathe um, was very hard. And then put myself in a situation where um, I was on the, on the mat, and I try to grab a guillotine so I can try to get my heels to my butt so I can try to get up to my feet. And when I did that, it popped again. So um, really, I stayed here another two or three days just because it was too tough to breathe and move around. Stayed in Vegas, and then just it's really nothing you can really do besides just endure the pain and just be comfortable and take pain meds and stay off of it and just, you know, ice it. So it took several months uh, for me to get back to normal, but... Ready to roll now. Yeah. So I was actually a little bit surprised. Like I thought the turnaround was kind of fast. I mean, did, yeah. did you? Was that like a goal for you? That like, hey, I got to get back in there, or or did you just go, well, they they offered, and I'm I'm kind of feeling all right. Um, you know, I really didn't think about that the time frame. You know, um, contrary to a lot of people believe, I like to be active. When I was <laughs> champion, I had you know me and John Jones the only one that had defended the belt four times in a year. So I like to fight, and once my body started feeling better. You know, it was it was better for me to deal with you know the, the fights that happened before than just to crawl up on a rock. So I think a, a champion really comes back and show you guys what he's made of. Let's say, I mean, the veteran that you are and everything that you've accomplished, and you got other things going on. I mean, when you go through pain like that, that just completely immobilizes you, does that start making you think a little bit? Like, man, is it worth going out there and doing this stuff anymore? It's always worth it. I mean that half a millisecond of oh, I won, oh nobody can screw me on a scorecard, or you knock the person out, or you get a phenomenal performance, you know. It's, it's crazy enough, but that's what we do it for. We get back in there over and over again for that chance that we get that one moment. And for me, I got another gear. I got another level I can actually reach, the tools and um, the skill sets I possess. I haven't always shown it. And, um, you know, when I fought Darren Till, that's probably the closest to one of the most perfect fights I've had. And um, I just want to try to do better than that. So for me... You know, it's a part of the game. It's a part of the it's part of the journey. I didn't understand it. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, um, the way things went down. But at the end of the day, you know, I just got a quick question in God and just go out there and do my thing. Yeah. So obviously, you know, everybody's talking about the losses that you've had to deal with. We're talking about literally number one, two, and three in the world. You're not getting finished. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what do you take out of those? I mean, you're talking about it's the process, right? I mean, do you look at the results or do you look at, you know, how you performed? And, and, and what do you take out of that? I mean, you're literally fighting the absolute best in the world. You know, I was in L.A. for um, a bulk of this training camp, and I was um, working with Antonio McKee, and I was staying with my buddy, Lynn Oden. He's a director for Cobra Kai, the number one film on Netflix. And um, he was just telling me, he said, one thing that a director told me, he said, be performance-centric, because you can really control your performance. And I just know that with me performing to the level that I can perform, everything else is going to pan itself out. I'm not going to have to worry about wins and losses. I'm not going to have to worry about bonuses and big fights. And I think I was focused so heavily on proving people wrong so many times in my career that um, it took away from focusing on proving people right. I got 20 or 30 people I got to prove right, coaches, loved ones, kids, training partners, um, people that really support me from the beginning. It's millions of people you got to try to prove wrong. So for me, just really focusing and really just understanding that life is not always a straight path. It can be, but we make choices, and I made choices in my life that kind of veered me off that path, and um, those are things I have to deal with, and, you know, quitting is not an option. I got to go out on top like I plan to do, and the way I saw myself in the beginning of the sport, that's not the way. It wasn't losing to these guys, and, and though they were, you know, the champion and one and two, but on paper, you know, I'm a better fighter than all of them. So there have been times in your career where it feels like you're fighting with a chip on your shoulder, fighting angry. Do you feel like in retrospect that was the wrong approach? It worked for those moments, and, but I didn't need to. Um, I should have just been fighting because I was, I was the best. I should have been fighting to prove that everything that we worked on, everything that we did uh, made sense, and it did. It always made sense. I never, I never ever went into a fight not prepared, not in shape, not ready, not trained, not um, cautious and, and conscious of everything that – my opponent could or could not do. So with that said, there's nothing I've ever been surprised with in there. You know what I mean? Never. And for me, focusing on just the performance alone would have solved so many different problems. Sometimes you may have seen a little bit more rah-rah out of me, but that should have came out anyway. Nobody should have to make me mad. Nobody should have to say I couldn't do something for me to do that when I know I already can. 
Do you have the role planned out for Cobra Kai? You're going to get on there, right? Dude? For sure, for sure. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but, yeah, I'm, I'm on there somewhere. I dig it. Talk about Vicente Luque. I mean, you were the guy. Was, I just wonder if he's on your radar. Cause like for the longest time, people came to you, right? You didn't have to watch out for the division. They're coming to you. So was this somebody you were watching at all and thinking, oh, but we're going to cross paths at some point? You know, I always watch these guys, and they, all, they still look coming for me. Even, like, think about the old rubric of the sport. Someone off of a loss usually fights somebody off of a loss. Not in my circumstance, you know. I can lose one, two, three, four, ten fights in a row, and I'm still the five-time world champion that was maybe right underneath George St. Pierre for being the best that ever did it and fighting trying to be the best. So for me, it's just like I was always Usman's biggest fight. I was Gilbert's biggest fight. I was Kobe's biggest fight. But before then, Darren Till was my biggest fight. Robert Lawler was my biggest fight. Carlos Conner was my biggest fight. Koshek was my biggest fight. And I needed to think of those guys in that way, and I didn't. So Luke K, for me, I think very heavy-handed, great and brawling, very tough chin, durable, good conditioning. Um, he's finished so many fights in the final seconds, you can't ever count him out. And um, he's my biggest fight. Yeah. And to be fair, he was here earlier and said this is his biggest fight, you know, for fighting sure, a former sure. champion. So uh, last thing for me, Ty, you said wanting to go out on top, man. Is, is that the drive right now? Like what, what gets you into the gym every day? What, what gets you to still – because I know it takes a lot of sacrifice and discipline to perform at this level. So what, what drives you at this point? Performance, performance. I just see myself you know, controlling, controlling the variables that I can control. And I've trained. I put my body through the fire. I'm ready to go. And – just performing, performing. Like, I don't even know how I can say it any different way. Um, I'm trying to draw some more fancier $50 words for you, but that's all it really boils down to is performing. And I do that against him, and I just focus on who's in front of me. Every fight is the biggest fight, and then after that, it's the next biggest fight in performance. And if I can do that, I think I'll be fine. Tyron, you mentioned the Darren Till performance and how it was nearly perfect. Does that performance and then going from that to the next three fights make it harder to understand why the things aren't going your way in the cage? Because you went from a perfect performance to less than stellar ones. Yeah, I mean, it's always confusing because you've been at the top for so long. You've been out the red corner for so long. And I told myself my last loss is my last loss. And you can tell yourself anything you want, but if you don't go out there and exercise your free will, you know, things can happen in Octagon. These guys were training while I was recovering from injuries. you got to recognize that. Very few fights did I not come out with either a surgery requiring injury or going into a fight with an injury. And that's just the fight style I fight. When I fought um, Damian Maya, I tore my labrum on the first punch. I was trying to take his head off. You know, he closed his eye, but I shattered my labrum on the first punch. Same thing with Kelvin Gaslam. Same thing with Darren Till. I tore my CMC joint trying to crack his nugget open. And I think when you're fighting to that style where you're just trying to put that kind of um, demolition, you know, and that kind of violence in a, in a performance, you're going to get injured. And I fought through those fights, and many of them I won. Mm -hmm. And um, in, the, in between me recovering, my opponents and my adversaries, they were training. They were getting better. And they were watching film, and they were, you know, with their team. And the time I took breaks, there's also seeds I planted. You know, you got to recognize that when you're at the top, you got a lot of opportunity, a lot of exposure. you got a lot of VIP, a lot of party, a lot of things you can get into. And I got, in, I got into the lifestyle for a while. And... You know, I think karma's real, and I think you got to pay the piper at the end of the day. So I just believe that those last storm bushes are gone. I feel like I've done things now. I've done things even in those last three fights. I trained my ass off. I was so ready. I was prepared, and I just didn't understand. And everything that I did to get to the top wasn't the training camp that I was in. It was the years and years before that put me in that position. So now I feel like I've, I've paid it for it. You still have time to turn things around, but... The story of a fighter getting to the top and then getting into the lifestyle, like you said, it, we've seen it time and time again. Do you think that's something you'll regret after no. this all is done? No, because I'm I'm here. It, it didn't kill me. It didn't it didn't it didn't it didn't take me away. It didn't decapitate me from the sport. And I think the story is better. The story is better when someone comes back. The story is better when somebody didn't quit. You know, and you know, I'm 38 years old. I'll be 39 in a couple of days. And I'm still I'm still on top. I'm still fast. I'm still explosive. I'm still probably the best mind in our division as far as IQ and knowing what's going on. Like, even when I wasn't doing, you still can look in my eyes and know that I can see stuff. Why is he taking it? He can avoid that. You know what I mean? I'm still there. So, for me, um, I don't regret it because I think everything is a part of the story. Everything is a part of the life. And like my mom said, you can't undo done. It's done. So, what am I going to harp on it?
that's a cool saying. Uh, we've seen it before as well with fighters. They have a bad run of form, and then it's almost like they, they feel they have to make a drastic change to get things back on track. Did you ever feel like, oh, I might just move to middleweight, or I have to walk away for a couple of years? Or did you think of any drastic changes, or did you think, no, I just need to stay on the path that I've carved already? My lifestyle was already drastic. I already trained drastic. You know, I don't know how much more I could have taken on my body anyway. So I just needed to focus on my mindset and being willing to put yourself into the fire, not wanting to play, oh, okay, I'm going to go out here, hopefully I get this quick knockout. Or, or, you know, I mean, this person's good, but they're not anywhere near as the other guys I've competed against. Or, or just really just being okay with the worst-case scenarios. I can be hurt, I can be losing, I can be down on the cars, and I still got to find a way to win. I can be winning, somebody can come back and clip me with a shot, and I got to keep it together. Or it can be a barn burner, and it may be one punch or one combination or one takedown or one um, escape or one get back up from the ground that, that solidifies the win. You got to be okay with all of that. You got to be okay with that you go out there and you perform your ass off, and a judge didn't see it your way. If you're okay with all those different outcomes, what, what are you scared of? You know, so I don't really need to do anything more. I mean, I've trained with Antonio McKee years and years back. One, shit's hard. Nobody, <laughs> nobody want to just willingly, openly just walk in there and do this shit. So for me, I had to take myself out of position where I can call the shots. And that wasn't just with McKee, but that was with Dean. That was with Eric Brown. Everybody, you know, no, nah, we're going again. No, nah, another round. No, nah, push it. You're going eight today. We're not doing six. Put your head back. Breathe. Move forward. Hands up. You know what I mean? And just the training partners. You know, my training partner that's in here somewhere, he was, he was screaming out, we're going to suffer together, we're going to die together. I kept saying, he said it for weeks. I said, hold on, man, we ain't finna die. <laughs> hold on, now, is, I get it. We ain't finna fucking die in this motherfucker. But I know what he meant. He meant die to the spirit so you can live in the, die to the flesh so you can live in the spirit so you can freely go because it's really spiritual out there. No matter what you believe in, when your body is done and you know you really physically shouldn't be able to do more, your spirit kind of takes over. Adrenaline, you go on autopilot, but if you don't do it in the practice room and you don't push yourself through it in the practice room, you're not going to do it in a fight. So, Last thing for me, it's not a particularly pleasant question, but over the past few months, we've seen names like Overeem, DeSantos, Romero, been let go from their contract to the UFC. Is there any concerns that after this fight, that could happen to you? I could have got let go before this. could have got let go after Gilbert. could have got let go after Usman. Could have got let go after Teal. It's not up to me. It's up to the organization. And I'm grateful that I got another chance to go out there and show myself. And in doing so, you guys will get a chance to watch as well um, what I am, how great I am. So I can't think about that. I'm thankful and I'm grateful. And sometimes in the past, you know, I had to recognize that I didn't run the organization. Whether I thought they should have promoted me a certain way or did certain things, that ain't, they got 600 athletes to think about. It wasn't always about me. And I may have figured that out a little too late in the game, but at the time, you know, I just, I never really trusted a lot of people. Like, I grew up in the street. I grew up gang banging, And, you know, it's trust and respect is earned. And I don't trust. I'm always, my head's always on the swivel. I'm always looking around and making sure my surroundings are good. I live in the murder capital of the fucking country. You know what I mean? I got to move a certain way. So I connect dots, and I put things together, and I'm thinking this is what the intent is. And then I always want to prove it wrong. So... Um, if I could look back, maybe I would have just focused more on performance and the things I can't control. I can't control what's behind the scenes. So to answer your question, that's not even in my mind right now. Thanks, Tyron. Tyron, right here. Uh, we spoke with Vicente earlier today, and he said he remembers his first interaction with you when you were backstage at UFC 205. You complimented his uh, wrestling boots. Uh, and he said after that, it, it was a really important moment to him because at the time mm -hmm. you were the champ of his division. He was like, oh, the champion likes my shoes. Do you remember that interaction at all, first meeting with Vicente? I remember Vicente? before that. I remember the Ultimate Fighter show. I remember him fighting um, Graves. I remember him, you know, I, don't, I think he only lost one fight on the show. I remember, you know... Um, him always being the guy that was put out there to fight, but never got a lot of the credit. Usman got a lot of credit for the show, but Vicente was fighting a lot of those fights. So um, I never let this up and coming guys catch me by surprise. So my eyes been on him for a long time. He had a great, great fight against Nico Price. He had a great fight against even Wonderboy Thompson. You know, Wonderboy did what he did best in the second and third round, which is to, you know, evolve and, and shift, but he still was in the fight. He never, he never stopped trying to walk him down. So um, I appreciate that, and I definitely respect Vicente. I've always have, and um, you know, I know he's coming after me, and I, and, and, I, and, I, and I sense that, and I feel it, and, and I welcome the smoke. 
Do you still think he's in that position where he doesn't really get the respect that you know how good he is, but maybe his ra- his ranking isn't indicative to his skill set or something? I mean, do you still think? We're he's not, like I'm that? not fighting a number. I'm fighting a, uh, an opponent. So the real ones and the, and the true people that study the sport and the real fighters, they would think I would be an idiot to to really underrate this, this young man, especially someone that's continually getting better and better and better and punching harder and harder and harder and uh, finding ways to just. He has a really good rubric, you know, watching film and breaking them down. He really, he's kind of sneaky on the way he sets the fight up. He's, he's puts you in bad position. He kind of backs you in a corner where you're forced to go to one place where he does really well. And um, a lot of people um, don't recognize that because he doesn't talk a lot about it. He don't talk a lot in general. And he just kind of goes out there and do And I used to be like that. You know, I let people think that I was just this athlete and I just had a one big right hand and, for years, I just allowed it to happen on purpose because they really underrated my, my mind and how, how high of a fight IQ I had. So by the time they figured out what I was doing, it was too late. And finally, uh, you mentioned yourself, like you like you were a champion, you defended your title four times, and you liked to be active. But if you look at the top five of this division, none of them have fought each other outside of the champion. So as someone that used to sit atop this division, is it frustrating at all to see that no one in the one through five are seem willing to fight. They're all kind of calling for the title, not willing to be matched up. Um, I, I can't focus on that. You know, I gotta, I gotta focus on my legacy, and I gotta get it back in order, get it back on track. So, um, to be real honest, I haven't, I haven't really watched a lot of it. Hey, Tyron, over here. Uh, right here. Uh, Tyron, at this stage of your career, how do you measure growth in your game? Because obviously, after all the big fights and where you're at, you're not about to drastically change your style to look completely different. So how do you measure that growth? How do you know that? Or, I don't know, are you about to be throwing a lot of head kicks, flying knees, looking like Adesanya? I mean, the good thing about it is you get a chance to watch on Saturday. Thank you. I can tell you anything. I can tell you I can go out there and throw a million punches and slam him on his head and break his neck and... I can go out there and watch paint dry again. So I'm just not really into telling you guys what I'm going to do. I'd rather just show you on Saturday. Tyron, you mentioned uh, losing the chip on your shoulder. What was the the moment or the the catalyst that kind of... I never said that. that. I never said I lost a chip on my shoulder. I said I redirected it. I'm not out to prove people wrong. I'm out to prove my people right to steal the chip there because my kids are watching me. They see me win big. They see me lose big. They see me at the top of the top, and they see me drop down. They see people say shit about me. And one thing they've never seen me do is quit. So the chip is very much still there. It's just a different one. Gucci. Thank you.